you know, the Houston Texans are changing a lot of people's minds. And I know that some of you people out there are still perhaps resisting the, I can't say that word on the air. You are resisting the smooching of C.J. Stroud, Houston Texans QB1's donk. You're resisting it. But some people are changing their minds. Before I go to a couple of clips that we pl- that are from the uh, Ryan Russillo podcast, which is probably my favorite sports podcast, Colin Coward, remember how he was so anti-CJ Stroud? Remember how he had that weird classic Colin Cowherd analogy or metaphor about granite countertops, BMWs. You got to go up against toughness if you want to succeed in the NFL. He's actually jumped on the CJ Stroud train. This is Colin Cowherd last week admitting he was wrong about Stroud. Where Colin was wrong. How about CJ Stroud? Missing offensive lineman. He's an adult. He's a professional. He reads the defense. Really like what I see. Shaky O line. Didn't say he was wrong, though. That's a bit disappointing. But hey, at the very least, he's saying he's good. He's not saying that Colin, that uh, CJ Stroud hasn't gone through adversity either, which he has because his dad has been in jail twice and is currently in jail. I, I think that's adversity, Sean Mapes. No, no. Well, A, the the segment is called Where Colin Was Wrong, and so I think that it's understood that if he's praising C.J. Stroud, he, he was didn't wrong. He didn't apologize. Uh, oh, also, a graphic is enough to admit you're wrong? That's uh, kind of Well, BS. there's also imaging. Uh, it was okay. the start of the clip. Okay. Uh, the clip literally starts with Where Colin Was Wrong. Where Colin Was Wrong. Uh, also, yeah, eh, I'm still not sure he's gone through adversity. Or no, actually, come on. Now, now he's gone through adversity. I will say now because the Laramie Tunsil didn't play the last. Two oh games. right, okay, because he's playing for the Texans and not Ohio State. And yeah, they're... yeah, because the offensive line injuries. That's 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 the uh, adversary that me and Colin Coward want to see. The offensive line, the receivers who we thought going into the year were going to be a weakness. Adversity. Adversity, yeah, adversary. Not not all those uh, granite advers- countertops and crown molding. Right. The adversity can be an adversary. I think adversary. Adversary. Well, you did say adversary at first, and now my brain is getting twisted. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. You know what else? I'm sorry. I'm the first person on the show to ever misspeak. That's true. Thank you for admitting it. Unlike Colin Coward. He didn't admit it. (laughs) Obviously joking a little bit there. He's not the only person that's changing his mind on C.J. Stroud. Todd McShay was the biggest C.J. Stroud bobo going into this year's draft. He was bumping his tires quite a bit. Here is Todd McShay earlier this week on Ryan Russillo's podcast continuing that praise. I don't want to say it's rare, but more often than not, when a, when a quarterback comes out and plays this well early on, it's a sign that he's going to have long-term success in the league. And I love that for C.J. Stroud. I love that everyone doubted him. I loved all the rumors and the talk about the whatever test it was that he wasn't, you know, couldn't process things fast enough and he wasn't as smart as, as Bryce Young and all that stuff. They came out and where they were kind of like other agencies were utilizing that against him. Uh, he was the best pure passer. And I said it 3000 times leading up to the, to the last April's draft. He was the best pure passer in that class and maybe the best pure passer in a couple of years coming out in the draft. No interceptions. He's lost two fumbles, but you know, he, again, a rookie quarterback through four games, only turning the ball over twice is pretty damn good, man. And again, doing it under pressure just shows how quickly he's processing, which everyone wanted to knock him for. The first thing that you heard from McShay there, I think is the most important thing. When a quarterback starts off like this, it doesn't guarantee success, but it's a pretty good indicator that he's going to end up being good. And obviously there will be some lulls. There will be some bad games from CJ Stroud. It's going to happen. But to this point, it it has been impressive, and it's the week-to-week improvement, which on another episode of the Ryan Russillo podcast, Julian Edelman, arguably an NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver, in the eyes of people that grew up in the Massachusetts area, Sean Maves is making a face. One of the greatest postseason receivers of all time, so 
Don't make that face. Oh, when he played in a million postseason games, of course he's going to be. Shut up! Here's what Julian Edelman had to say about C.J. Stroud. I'm, I've been really impressed with Stroud. I, I watched him in the preseason, and he didn't look this great. And what it tells me is, with these young quarterbacks, you, you really want to look for how are they improving each week? Are they making the same mistakes twice? And C.J. Stroud hasn't. I mean, he's taking the coaching. That's all you want to see from a young quarterback. You want to just see if he's improving. Because you're going to make a mistake as a young player. You're going to make mistakes. Mistakes are all, are made by everyone. This league is the best league, you know, when it comes to parity and all that and, and having dogs on all side. So it's about how does the kid handle mistakes does he learn from the mistake? Does he make the same mistake twice? And C.J. Stroud's been doing a great job by not making the same mistake twice. Love hearing that. And, I mean, it's been consistent What uh, with what I've been telling you from the beginning of the preseason. Week one, didn't look good. But he did get better as that game went on. Week two, yeah, not the result you're looking for. Obviously, that red zone stint was not very good either. But he was better in that game. Week three, he looked great against the Saints. Regular season week one, obviously he's figuring out his footing in the NFL. No touchdown drives, but you saw some growth there. Week two, obviously you didn't see the offense purring soon enough. And the Texans were in a 14-point hole before we even knew what happened. But as that game went on, I thought he played better. And the last two games have been outstanding. So I get hesitance to jump aboard the C.J. Stroud bandwagon. I get hesitance to avoid smooching that donk. But I think as time goes on, if you resist, you are going to be on an island all by yourself. 